How many of you know he finished his part? So, you know, we have to count yourself healed if you want healing. Got to count it yours now. There has to be a now time Amen. you take healing. Just like there was a now time you took him as Savior. Was there a now time you took him as Savior? Yes. yes. All right. Then you don't think you're still going to do it, do you? You believe it's done, don't you? Yes. You got to get like that back about healing. Gone. You got to. That's important. Got to get your mouth straight. Got to get your words straight. Got to get your thinking straight in line with the Word of God. This will never change. Amen. Heaven and earth will pass away, but this will never change and it will never pass away. So this is true whether anybody believes it or not. But if you want to experience it, you've got to believe it. Amen. And so the title of today's message is this. One in faith believes God's report. One in faith believes God's report. Right? Yes. It's true. So let's, uh, let's look at uh, Matthew 21 and 22 right now. Matthew 21 and 22. Matthew 21 and 22. Put that one on the screen, please. Okay, there it is. Now, this is in red. And all things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer. What's that next word? See, that's your part. Believing. you shall receive. It didn't say you might. It said you shall. Whatever you ask in prayer, doing what? Believe. That's your part then, isn't it? Yeah. You don't... ...ask in prayer, believing. So... Go ahead and get your card out there and see what that word believe means. Believe is not, oh, I hope so. Maybe someday, some way. I know he's able. That's not believing. Hoping's not believing. A lot of people are in hope. I believe he's going to. If you believe he's going to, that, even if you really believe it's going to, that's hope. Hope has to do with future promised goods. Faith has to do with now, Amen. right now, today. today. So there has to be a believing time if you want there to be a receiving time. And many times the receiving is a process. How many of you found that to be true? Amen. And if you don't give up in the process, you shall have it the full result. Amen. But they, these and all things, of course, in these all things, you'll be asking according to the Word of God, in line with the Word of God. Asking outside the Word of God, you can't have faith for it. But you can have faith and believe in Him if you will. You do remember Jesus said, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my Word won't pass away. That's sure. 
Nothing more sure than the Word of God. Amen. And God is faithful to His Word to all generations. That's in the Word of God. You know, you need to get it off the pages in your heart, your spirit, and in your mouth. That's where so many people have missed it so long, and I missed it there myself a long time, was getting it in my mouth. Saying what God's Word said. See, most people want to wait till it looks like God's Word says. No, you, you must agree with God if you want it to come to look like it, say, he said. If you want to experience it. Amen. How many of you want to experience all that salvation is? It was for you. Remember, he said in his word, the word said, he'll be salvation to the ends of the earth. Amen. Where's that found, Stan? Isaiah 49 and 6. In the other one's 51 8. I see it. <laughs> and he'll be salvation from generation to generation. Isaiah 51 and 8. That's Isaiah 51 and 8. This is the word of God. But how many of you know everybody's not walking in salvation? With it being provided even. At a great price. Jesus gave himself a ransom. Jesus redeemed us from the curse. Jesus took the curse for us. Jesus defeated Satan for us. Jesus arose victorious over death, hell, and the grave for us. To redeem us. To give himself a ransom for us. And it's finished. So at some point in time, you've got to count his work finished. Don't you? How many of you, how many of you believe you're saved today? All right, then you believe, you believe he did. And you've taken it as yours. So you're not now hoping he will. Oh, I believe you can, Lord. Well, he can if you don't believe. He's bound to his word. If you want what he's promised, you've got to get in line with his word. In your believing and in your thinking and in your speaking. So that's your part, isn't it? But he said all things that you ask in prayer, believing. So what did the believe mean? Got your card? Yes. Trust in. Rely on. Rely on. Commit to. Cling to. Oh, there's some clinging to if you're in a faith fight. The enemy's going to try to get you to give up. He's going to even bring back symptoms sometimes. You got an enemy, but thank God he's a defeated one. Yes. When I learned he is already defeated, that helped me. I don't have to defeat him. I just have to resist him. I just have to act against him and oppose him and let him know. I know you. I know you're defeated, devil. Jesus defeated you, Amen. and I've I've been reminding him yesterday. You're headed for the pit, Amen. and from there you're headed to the lake of fire. And I hope it's not long till you're there, and you're going to be there forever. Amen. And you deserve it, devil. Yes. You don't have to be afraid of the devil. Aren't you glad you've learned you don't have to be afraid of him? He's a defeated devil. Yes. But you do have to learn how to put him in his place. Yes. 
you do have to learn to resist him, act against him, oppose him. Who told you that? Anybody know who told you to submit yourself to God and resist the devil? James 4 and 7. James told us, submit yourselves therefore to God and do what? Resist. Act against, oppose, and withstand the devil. And what will he do? Flee. So do you want him fleeing from you or you want to flee from him? Okay, then you've got, you got something to do, don't you? And I do say this, if you just sit down and listen to him, you're not fleeing from him. If you sit down and meditate on what he's bringing to your mind, see, you've got to renew your mind with the Word of God. We're even told in the Word of God, you've got to do something about your mind. You're thinking. You've got to bring your thinking in line with the Word of God. To bring your words in line with the Word of God. And to do this, your thinking and your words, you're going to have to know what the Word says. This book needs to become your number one go-to source. The Word of God. It'll stand forever. Where's that one found? Do you remember that and stand? where it said heaven and earth will pass away. But my word will not pass away. Matthew 24 and 35. See? Get these things off the pages and in your heart. Know the word. What did Jesus tell us in John 8, 31 and 32? If you continue in my word, you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. So go, put, go ahead and put that up. I'll, I'll get to my other things here in a little bit, I suppose. Put up John 31, 32. 8, 31, 32. Let, let, let everybody see it here in the house and those online. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, but also to you Gentiles which believe on him. One of my great grandfathers was a Jew, but that wouldn't make me a Jew. Like one of my grandmothers, great grandmothers was Cherokee, but that doesn't make me Cherokee. But I'm a mixture. And you shall know the truth. And what will knowing the truth do? But see, this implies here that the one that knows the truth, and you need to look down here at the end of your card, that word know, it doesn't just mean mentally, have mental knowledge of. Faith is not mental. Faith is of the heart and the spirit. The mental part of you, the mind of you has to be renewed with the Word of God, and we're told this many times in here. So what does that word no mean? How many of you got your card with you? See, I ask y'all to bring your cards with you. How many of you got your cards? Oh, we. Well, I must applaud you. So that word no, to know, and then absolute, and, and his word is absolute, in a great variety of applications. Did you get to know the truth all at once? Even on the new birth? And you won't get to know it all at once on healing or any of the promises and provisions of God. And you'll never get to know them if you don't get in the Word and you don't hear the Word. You don't study the Word. You know you're told study the Word. Did you know you're told meditate on the Word? Yes. How many of you know you're told to meditate on the Word? Yes. Yeah. Why? So that you'll see how to do it. Yes. You, then you'll observe how to do it. And then you'll have good success. Yes. Then you'll prosper mm -hmm. if you'll meditate on the Word. Hallelujah. And so 
it in a great variety of applications or applying it, applying the word over and over and over again. And with much using. See, this is taken from the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance Bible Dictionary. Much, with much using. You, if you just leave your Bible laying around somewhere and you don't get it off the pages and in your heart and say it, you're not using it. Are you? You can pass by and bless you. But you've got to get it out of the pages, off the pages in here and in here. And you've got to use it. Who do you think you've got to use it on? Well, one of them's the devil. One of them, there's the symptoms. Sometimes it's on doctrines of men. When you hear something that doesn't line up with the word of God, you know that's a doctrine of men. And God doesn't confirm doctrines of men Amen. or denominational doctrines that don't agree with this right here. He's bound to his word. Heaven and earth is going to pass away, but not his word. That's why you can build your life on the word. You can be sure about the word. But see, a variety of applications and with much using. How many of you use it much? Are you seeing the more now the need of using it? It's not enough just to actually have mental knowledge of what it says. We need revelation knowledge of what it said, revealed. Uh, you know who the revealer is? The Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. Remember, he's one with the Father and one with the Son in everything they do. They work together as one. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank God we have all... How many of you believe all three are for you? Amen. 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 Makes a difference. With much using. Are you going to start using it more? If you're not using it much, you should. You should. And be aware of. The only way you're going to be aware of what it says is if you've studied it and you've heard it. I don't know of any other way you're going to be aware of what it says. You've either heard it or you've studied it. Or both. How many of you are aware of what he says about healing? How many of you are aware that he said by his stripes you are healed? Yes. How many of you are aware that he said by his stripes you were healed? Amen. See, do you know there are a lot of people have never heard that? And then some have heard it and they still say, well, it may not be God's will. No way. No way he would have paid such a price and hung there. Do you know he hung on the cross for you? Think about that sometimes. I know this one day this last week, I thought I may teach on that sometime. He, Jesus hung on the cross for you. He did. He hung on the cross for you. When they came around and mocked him and even spat on him, put a crown of thorns on his head, beat on the, crown, on the thorns till blood flowed down his face even, mocked him, said, come down from the cross now and we'll believe you're him. You're the son of God. And he even said, you saved others but yourself you can't save. They knew, they'd seen miracles. They'd seen Lazarus that he raised from the dead. And do you know that after Lazarus was raised, 
that they plotted to put him back, put him to death again because so many had believed on Jesus because of his resurrection. I mean, there were, there were evil men that were opposed to him in that day, just like there are evil men that are opposed to him today. But thank God I know him. Amen. Thank you, See, we're meant to know him. Yes. I, I don't, now today, I don't just know about him. I know him. Yes. I spend time with him. I talk to him. He talks to me. The Holy Ghost talks to me. How about you? Everything I teach comes from the Holy Ghost teaching me. I don't know anything the Holy Ghost hasn't taught me. And I've shared with you how that back there when I was semi-invalid and I saw that I needed to know the truth and I cried out, Lord, let your word come alive in me to where it's not just words I'm reading off the pages like reading a history book. And he began to do that. And then I cried out, Holy Spirit, teach me. You know, Jesus said he'll teach you. He's the teacher. He can teach you. He's one with the Father, one with the Son. He knows the word is true but he'll teach you if he can get your attention. He's a teacher and he's a God. How many of you know him as your God? Oh, in this day, you need to know him as your God. You need, him, you need your God. And, and John 16 and 13 said, he'll guide you in the truth. This is where he always guides you to the truth. Amen. Never away from it. Never to any doctrine that's contrary to it. Yes. He guides you. Thank God for my guide. Amen. But you know, you have to follow a guide. Yeah, I know I've shared a long time ago how that me and my husband and another couple visited the Cathedral Caverns. Anybody know about the Cathedral Caverns around here? How many of you have ever toured them? Yeah. It's a, it's a sight to see. But in there, they've got their, the, the, there's the stalactites and the stalag, stalagmites and big cliffs dropping off down there, but, and they have up there just a little narrow wall-like thing to walk on. And buddy, I'll tell you, I kept my eyes on the guy. <laughs> and they're not too far from here. They're just over at Grant. If you haven't seen them, you might ought to go through there. You'll, that'll make you know you need a guy if you don't know it already. But he's a God. And he won't even speak of himself, the Holy Ghost. He speaks of Jesus. He glorifies Jesus. But if what he here, he'll show it to you. You ever had him show you anything? Yes. I've had him show me some things. And I was even bold enough to tell others once he showed me. I know back there, when I first came to Cornerstone, and I have shared this, the Lord released me to come the first of the year in 1998, and I didn't do it. So the first, the last week of January of 1998, those symptoms that the Lord had delivered me from, the 
muscle disease and the bones along it in the night time. It was just like my whole flesh was just stretched and it, all my muscle power was gone. And my bones started hurting again. And I got to where I couldn't go walk up anything. I had to hold on to things to get up and down them. See, I was in disobedience. The Lord had released me to come out here. My husband didn't want me to come. <coughs> and so I obeyed my husband instead of obeying the Lord. You know, if the Lord tells you something, no matter what other person disagrees with it, you better do it. So I fought that battle nearly all that whole year. And Pastor Mark, if he hadn't been standing in and praying for me and speaking for me and doing warfare for me, I don't know. But I know I even share this on June the 21st. That morning, of course, we were over in the old building. But in March, I did come out here with my husband saying, I'll never go. I'll never go. And so I came on out here in March. I was already teaching in the Bible Institute. And so on June the 21st, that Sunday morning, Pastor Mark was praying for people. And uh, the insurance man, what's his name? Anyway, I can't think of his last name right now, but everybody didn't know him if I did. He came to me and said, don't you want to go up for prayer? And so I walked on up there. And that morning, as, as Pastor Mark was praying for me, he said, you will be speaking to the nations. Now that was a long time ago. But that did something for me. And on, uh, uh, that helped me to start counting healing mine. And from that point on, I began to improve. And so uh, when I had been coming, then out here, I came out here in March. And then the next March, the Holy Spirit said to me, Don's going to be coming in July. I told Pastor Mark, I said, Don's going to be coming in July. I told Susan, a friend who was coming to Cornerstone, I said, Don's going to be coming in July. I told some of my, one of my good, or two of my friends back at the other church, Don's going to be coming in July. And my sister-in-law, I said, and, and I told different ones. And Judy, my sister-in-law, she said, said, I said to myself, I'm going to have to wait and see this one. But in July, on the first Sunday, I asked Don, would you go with me today? No, I've told you I'll never go. <laughs> so he went on to the other church where we had gone, as he said, 40 years. He said, you left your friends of 40 years. I said, but Don, the Lord released me. Oh, the Lord didn't release you. You've been wanting to be out there that much all the time. <laughs> he was right. I'd been wanting to be out here. But I did have to wait. The Lord kept me 18 years after he raised me up to stay there and teach. He said, you stay here and teach others what I taught you. And I did. And there were some that received miracles. And so, Don, something was said in, just in jest to Don from someone that morning. And he went down and told my brother, because I'd turned my class back over to my brother, and, and Don was making coffee for the, that class and all. He, went, he told Ray, he said, um, get so-and-so to make you coffee. He said, I'm going to start going with Opal. <laughs> and Don was chairman of ushers at the other church at that time. And so he went back the next Sunday to tell the pastor who of his crew he thought would be uh, capable of taking it becoming head usher. And so, then the next Sunday, he started coming. 
You know the Holy Ghost knows. And I'll tell you, I've learned to believe him and to trust him if he tells me something. Amen. He's trustworthy. Yes, he is. He'll show you things to come. You know, he hasn't quit doing that. Yeah. Right. And he's an encourager, never a discourager. He wants you to make it. He'll help you to make it. The Holy Ghost is called your helper. Did you know that? He's your helper. Strengthener. Stand by. That's the Spirit of God. And when, you, when the Word of God is in you and the Holy Spirit's in you, according to John uh, 14, in 23, you have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit by the Word and by the Spirit. They're all in you. And Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. And he had already told them in verse 21, If you love me and keep my commandments, I will manifest myself to you. You want him to manifest himself to you? Well, love him. Amen. Keep his word. He'll make himself known to you. Spend time with him. That's how you get to know him. You want to know him, don't you? Not just know about him. Know him. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my fathers, and I will love him and will manifest, make myself known to him. Amen. That's the word of God. That was the word of Jesus. That's the desire of Jesus. Then and now. He wants us to know him. And he wants us to make him known. And so where were we on, on no here? Is anybody, where did we get to? Much using, be aware of. Have knowledge. You're, we're meant to have knowledge of the work of Jesus, of the word of God. We're meant to have knowledge. Perceive. Again, that would be saying you know it, wouldn't it? Be, be resolved. That'll, that means it's settled then, doesn't it? Is the word settled in you? Yes. Have you got it settled in you? God's word is true. Yes, it is. God is faithful to his word to all generations. Yes. Heaven and earth will pass away, but his word won't pass away. He'll never leave you or forsake you. He'll be with you always to the, even to the end of the world. See, he's told us these things. Can speak. Can you speak it? Can you tell others the word? You're supposed to get to where you can. You're supposed to be his witness, remember? Yeah, you're, you're his witness. And... I, got, I finally got bold enough where I could do that. I could talk to others, even though I was a little country girl, reared up on the mountain, way up there. Grew up without my mother. But you know what? Jesus knew me and called me and qualified me. To be his, to be his spokesperson, Amen. his teacher. Amen. Loved me, but he doesn't love me any more than he loves every one of you, and everybody else is that out in the world, in the on the earth. Loves everybody. Desires good for everybody. Has provided good for everybody. 
and so can speak. There was a time, as I said, being a girl and growing up in the country, I was very timid. I, I really wouldn't talk to men. Uh, I guess I, I don't know why I was afraid to talk to men, but I'm not afraid to talk to them now. <laughs> and something that was a real blessing to me was this. Back when I was on TV full time, uh, we, several of us used to go over to Cracker Barrel and have lunch together after healing school. And so we were leaving there. I was leaving there going to my car. And this young lady came out. She looked like she was in her early 30s, maybe, from, from her. She said, are you Opal? I said, yes. She said, well, wait, my, my, my dad wants to see you. I said, he's in there paying the bill. And so I stood there and waited. He came right on out. And he said, came up, hugged me. He said, oh, you've changed my life. <laughs> the teaching had changed his life. And others came up and told me at Dillard's shopping there, there was this lady that came up. Oh, she was dressed to the hilt. Very sophisticated looking. And she came up and she said, I just want to tell you, I watch your program. And said, I also want you to know I'm very selective as to what I watch. <laughs> you need to be selective as to what you watch and what you hear. You need to be very selective of what you hear. Don't you? Yes. And so... But again, we're to come to that place that we can speak it to others. Did you know you're supposed to be his witness? Yes. How many of you know that everybody you meet is either going to heaven or hell? Yes. That's why I buy so many of those little new birth books. Give them away out there. And the little in him books, I buy a bunch of them, give them away. I know when we went to Nassau, I had taken a bunch of the books in, me, in there. And when some, some of them in there saw that I was giving some of the books away, they started gathering around. <laughs> if I'd have had hundreds of them, I could have given them away. And I, I do believe that somebody in Nassau will make it to heaven because of getting those books. I, I hope every one of them do. The new birth is about being born again, accepting Jesus. And that's the only way you're going to heaven. If you're born again, Jesus said you must be born again or you cannot inherit the kingdom. You can't enter the kingdom. And that's true no matter if it's your son, your daughter, your brother, your sister. No matter how good they are or how bad they are, they're either going to heaven or they're going to hell. And you need to be doing what you can to speak to them the word of God. And no, they may not hear you. I know I've worked on two of my brothers a long time and prayed for them a good long while before they came to know the Lord. Both of them had been in the service and got started drinking while they was in there. But they needed to be saved. They needed somebody to stand in the gap and pray for them, claim their deliverance, believe the Lord to save them. You got anybody you need to be praying for? Lord, Woo. Anyway, this is a different healing school. And I do, this is 1st of October, and I, uh, I've been doing healing school 24 years in October. So that's a long time. We've had people healed here in the Word.
We know some that got their healing, don't we? Did Carol have that head shaking like that? Yeah, and she came at least a year, maybe a year and a half, you brought her. And she finally received her healing. And still has still no head shaking at all. Yeah, that's right. She goes to church over, over where, my, uh, where Ray's daughter goes. And she sent me word after she found out Susan was my niece. Yeah. She's still healed. And she, she came a year and a half listening. I believe she came at least a year and a half before she got her healing. And Cecilia's the one that brought her. Praise God. Amen. Somebody, you got anybody you need to be working on that needs healing? Start telling them about healing. They may not believe you at first, but it's true. Get, but see, you can't speak it if you don't know where it is. And I do encourage you, as you study the Word, as you learn Scripture, learn the location. I know I started out, uh, actually the way I got started memorizing Scripture was when I was in grammar school. Back there upon the mountain, if in the low classes there, I don't remember what class I was in, they gave us little prizes for memorizing Scripture. Wouldn't it be wonderful if they did that today? Yes. Instead of all this stuff they're teaching. And so the little book that I won had two stories in it. It was whiter than snow and little dot. And that, lip, that one on little dot helped me to see I needed to be saved. My mother had already gone to be with the Lord. And so this one, little dot, she was a rich girl. And she got sick and everybody thought, you know, She's got everything. And for a long time, nobody told her about Jesus. And so finally, somebody did tell her about Jesus. And before she died, she got, she got to know Jesus. You know, that's not the main thing. Yes. Knowing Him. Amen. And we're meant to know Him. So, can speak. We're down to that one. Be sure. Are you sure God's Word is true? Are you sure he's faithful to his word? Yes. Yes. We're told in Psalms 119, 89 and 90, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in the heavens, and thy faithfulness is to all generations. So, did you know you can be sure about that? Jesus told us in Matthew 24 and 35, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Are you sure about that? He performs his word to all generations. Are you sure about that? See, but you've got to know and you've got to believe. And so what's the title of our message today, Sherry? Sherry? One in faith believes God's report. Do you believe God's report yet? What is his report? What about Isaiah 53 and 5 that we start out with it on the screen? That's still his report. So put it back up for us. Isaiah 53 and 5. This is God's report. This thing came through the uh, prophet Isaiah foreseeing Calvary, seeing Jesus on the cross, even seeing him going to the cross when his visage was so marred when, after they had beaten him till he was hardly recognizable as a man. But he went there. And do you know he could have said, Father, I just can't do it. He even prayed, Father, if there's any other way, let this cup pass from me. But he knew there was no, no other way. And so he was willing to go there for you and for me and to take our place to take our infirmities and bear our sicknesses and take our sins. If he was willing to do it 
and pay that price, you surely, surely should believe it and take it as yours. Shouldn't you? But he was wounded for our transgression. See, put yourself in there. He was doing this for the world. Everyone to the ends of the earth, it said. And from generation to generation, he had come to be salvation. This is the same one that had told us, there's one coming that will be my salvation to the ends of the earth and will be my salvation from generation to generation. Jesus and he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are. See, you've got to start believing you are. That was my big problem. I was wanting to wait till the symptoms were gone. And especially to start confessing it. And after the way people looked at me when I started confessing it. But you know what? I was once there. If someone had said they were healed and they still couldn't turn their neck and they still were limping, their hip was locked up and they could just barely creep along, I wouldn't have believed them either. Why? I wasn't believing God. You know, when you're not believing the words, you're not believing God. I'm telling you about healing. It's just not that you're not believing me. You're not believing God if you don't believe and take hold of your healing. Are you? The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we what? Are healed. Are healed. Are healed. There has to become a time that you believe you are healed. And then, now let's just look at 1 Peter 2, 24. This Pe Peter walked with Jesus while he walked on the earth. Peter was one of the ones that he sent them out and, and they were to lay hands on the sick and they were to be healed. He was one of the first 12. And then Jesus sent out another 70 to lay hands on the sick, cast out devils. And so Peter saw Jesus when he went to the cross. He saw him when he was raised again. He saw him with the scars in his hands. There in John, the 21st chapter, when he appeared to them. You know, Thomas wasn't there at first. And so... He wouldn't believe it. He said, I won't believe it unless I can touch the place in his hands and the place in his side where they pierced, that, pierced him with the spear. And so the next week, Jesus appeared to them again and Thomas was there. Well, you know, Jesus knew what he'd said even though he wasn't there. Just like he knows what you're saying. That's why it's important what you say. Jesus is listening to your words. And so when they came together that time and Thomas was there, Jesus told him, Thomas, let's see, that's in John 21. Let's just go over there and look at that. John 21. John, 21st chapter. Gracious. Maybe, it, maybe it's the 20th. It is the 20th chapter. Oh, yeah. It's the 20th chapter. So I was off a chapter. And so, uh, verse 26 of John 20. Let's, let's read that. See? And, and Jesus didn't just call him doubting Thomas. He said, unbelieving Thomas. 26. And after eight days, 
again his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then said he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands. And reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side. And be not faithless, but believing. So are you going to be faithless or believing? But believing. See, you've got to be a believer if you want to be a receiver today of what he did. And so he, did, he didn't just say now, Thomas, why did you doubt? No, he said, be not faithless. Are you faithless or are you believing? Where would you fit? What category would you fit in? Are you faithless? Are, are you believing? believing? Do you believe that by his stripes you were healed and are healed? So now put up 1 Peter 2.24. See, Peter saw him was when, before he was crucified and after he was crucified. So 1 Peter 2.24. And so this is what Peter had to say. Who is on self... Jesus bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes you were. See, it's got to become. We are, I am, we were. And when you can come to that place that you believe you are and you were, it's going to manifest in you. We must believe we are and we were based on the work of Jesus and on the Word of God. The Word can't fail. God can't fail. The Word is true. God is true. Heaven and earth will pass away, but His Word won't pass away. Doctrines of men may say differently, but the word of God said we are and we were. So whose report will you believe? See, that's what he said. Who hath believed our report? So now put up Isaiah 53 and 1. See, one in faith believes God's report. If, there, if you're not there yet, you need to be working on it. This question is asked of you, of me, of the world. Who hath believed our report? What is his report? It's the written word that tells us what he did. That's the report. Peter told us, Jesus told us, himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. He told us in Luke 24, 44 through 47, I fulfilled everything the prophet said of me. Isaiah being one of them. All of the prophets. I fulfilled everything that the books of the law said of me. I fulfilled everything that is written of me in the Psalms. And much is written of him in the Psalms concerning salvation. And he came to be salvation to the ends of the earth. And from generation to generation. But this question is asked of everyone, of us, anybody that wants to be healed, who hath believed our report. That's your part, isn't it? He's the provider and cost him, cost him his life. But who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm, or we would say the power, of the Lord revealed or made known. It's to the one that believes his report. And the, if you're in faith, faith believes God's report, right? Amen. Uh, and, and, and you'd almost have to have more than one report, wouldn't you? Yeah. You may have a report that said there's no cure. 
it'll get worse and worse. That was what they told me. Stay as mobile as you can. But here I am. I finally came to that place I believed this report with all the symptoms there. And God is faithful to perform his word Amen. to all generations. Amen. And so I wanted to read you this real quickly and then we've got to go. I said, healing becomes yours in your spirit. That's in your heart, your spirit, your inner man before it manifests in your body. And there was Isaiah 53 and 1, 4 and 5. And I said, what is God's report? It's his written word. The written word is the word of God. And Jesus said we are to live by the word, Matthew 4 and 4. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And I said how we treat the written word is how we treat God. We only honor God as much as we honor his written word. To honor God, we must honor his written word, the Bible. This is God's word speaking to us. Amen? Amen. Time's up. God bless you. good and perfect gifts yet sometimes I push them away simply because I just didn't believe all your word has to say Lord I thank you for your mercy you're so long suffering to me but I'm ready to walk in the power of your resurrection I am ready to stand in your place of victory I believe in the finished work of Jesus I believe in the finished work of the cross Spirit, soul, and body You restored what had been lost I believe work of the cross You've given such good and perfect gifts And now no longer push them away Despite all that I see My heart will believe All your word has to say Lord, I thank you for your healing You endure such punishment for me so I'm taking my stand in the power of your resurrection Yes, I am taking my stand in your place of victory